The modern world is built upon fuels, from coal power stations to petrol powered cars. Allow these fuels access to oxygen, provide a kick of energy, and presto, we have heat, expanding gases, and power. There are situations where we need to alter this simple formula a little, such as in the vacuum of space. Here, we need to provide the oxygen ourselves, by either using liquid oxygen or oxidizers. This solves the immediate problem, but there are drawbacks to needing two substances to fuel your rocket. If you wish to go down the route of solid propellant rockets, with the fuel and oxidizer pre-mixed in a solid mass, then you have a great deal of simplicity. Solid rockets do have the slight drawback that once you have ignited your propellant, you are along for the ride. There is no throttling of the rocket, there is no shutting down of the rocket, it will shut down when it's good and ready. If all this is a little bit ungainly for your purposes, then you have options such as liquid fueled rocket engines. These have the advantage of being able to be shut down and their thrust adjusted, but you are required to deliver two different liquids at the correct ratio in vast amounts. This means a lot of plumbing. Really, a lot of plumbing. This is where monopropellants come in. A monopropellant is a type of propellant that releases energy through decomposition instead of oxidization. This means, instead of burning the fuel, it has passed over a catalyst, which causes the monopropellant to decompose into a variety of hot gases. These gases expand, delivering thrust. Ta-da! One rocket. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about catalysts. Catalysts lower the activation energy for a chemical reaction without being used up in the process. Think of it like this. You want to get to the other side of a mountain, but your car can't quite make it. A catalyst is like adding a tunnel through the mountain. Suddenly it's very easy to get to the other side, and you and all your friends can drive through easily. The primary use of monopropellants is in reaction control systems, RCS. These systems allow precise attitude control, and sometimes translation control, using short bursts of thrust. Attitude control is essentially controlling the direction in which the spacecraft is pointing through rolling, pitching, and yawing. Translation control is moving forwards and backwards, up and down, and side to side. This is exceptionally useful in docking manoeuvres, where you need to be able to make precise changes in velocity and slowly approach another object. With advantages such as simplicity of construction and the ability to precisely control thrust, duration and intensity, you may be asking yourself why monopropellants are not used in the large main engines we see in the ascent stages of rockets. Simply put, it's because they don't have the oomph. The Russian Soyuz launch vehicle uses liquid oxygen and RP-1, a heavily refined form of kerosene. In a vacuum, the specific impulse of the ascent stages are in the region of 320 seconds, whereas the average hydrazine-powered RCS thruster will only deliver in the region of 220 seconds. There are some limited cases where monopropellants are used in smaller main thrusters, such as in the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, which is currently orbiting an asteroid. However, the main thrusters of this craft are not large, as the spacecraft only weighs 880 kilos. Applications like this are where simplicity and accuracy are valued over power. The most popular monopropellant is hydrazine, with hydrogen peroxide having been used fairly regularly as well. Hydrazine is a wonderfully toxic compound, will spontaneously explode given half a chance, and on top of all that, it's probably carcinogenic. However, when you pass it over a catalyst, it decomposes into ammonia, nitrogen and hydrogen, along with a ton of heat. Both Voyager 1 and 2 utilise hydrazine thrusters, as well as the Atlas launch vehicles. The Space Shuttle also used hydrazine, but not as a propellant. The same expanding gases from decomposing hydrazine that make for a good propellant also make it a good source of energy for driving turbines. Aboard the Space Shuttle, there are three auxiliary power units, which provide power to hydraulic systems, which in turn allow for operation of a number of things, including the thrust vectoring of the main shuttle engines, movement of the aerodynamic control services, and deployment of the landing gear. Hydrogen peroxide is also toxic, flammable, and will form explosive compounds. At least that is true at the high concentrations used as monopropellants. At lower concentrations, it is a household item used for disinfecting and bleaching. Hydrogen peroxide was used in the first American human space flight program, Project Mercury, for attitude control. It was also used in the North American X-15, a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft. Able to reach the edge of space, to this day it still holds the world record for highest speed recorded, by a manned powered aircraft, Mach 6.7 set over 50 years ago in 1967. There are ongoing attempts to find new monopropellants, ideally ones that are less likely to kill anyone that has the misfortune of having an accident with them. 
and there has been significant progress, but for the time being, hydrazine is still clinging on. <laughs>